Oh, hey everyone. I'm just coloring while we are waiting for people to come online and get started. How's it going? Just to over here at our virtual bookstore. Um, if you have printed out the coloring packets, which we posted a link to in the Zoom chat, uh, please color along with us. Um, we're just waiting a few minutes for more people to come online. How's everyone doing today? Just going to give it a few more minutes and then our amazing host Hannah is going to start us off. Can't wait to see how other people end up coloring this. I will want to see what everyone makes. Um, please send it to us over email if you'd like to share or tag beautiful symmetry on Instagram. And if you haven't been able to print this out, but you want to start playing along, we've also posted some links in the Zoom chat where all of this comes to life and in interactive animations online. So please start playing with symmetries. And I hope we can get started soon, too. Alex, before we begin, someone already has a question. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, if they're following along with the book, which page should they be on? Oh, you should be all the way at the back um, in the wallpaper section. So the what we'll be coloring through today, um, these are sheets. They're special. Um, they're not right from the book, but all of the content is derived from the concepts in the wallpaper section of the book. So if you're in that section of the book, it can really help you understand what we'll be doing today. Um, but then there are these extra uh, packets, uh, coloring sheets as well. And there's the book in case you don't yet have your copy. But also don't worry if you, if you don't want to get one. It's fine. This is also going to be really fun. Any other questions, Anna? No, I think that's it so far. I think we can get going in just a, a minute. OK. So if everybody wants to print the pages, I recommend printing them now, and then we'll get started. Yeah, and even if you don't have access to a printer, just opening them up in your browser will really help you follow along to what we're being we're going to do today. Because yes, we can color, but we're also going to just be talking about symmetries too. And that'll be fun in itself. But it's hope it's helpful if you're able to look at what we're talking about. Like what I'm coloring. All right, so while Alex is coloring, I'm gonna start some things off. Um, I just wanna say hi and thank you for joining us. And um, welcome to the first session of MIT Press Live, a new virtual event series brought to you by the MIT Press. I'm Hannah Nyren, I'm the Digital Marketing Manager at the MIT Press, and I'll be your host for the series. And today is our first author event to kick off the series. We are really excited. Um, we have Alex Burke here, author of Beautiful Symmetry, and she is going to lead a coloring workshop. Hi, Alex, how's it going? Uh, thanks for asking. I'm doing well relative to the world outside this virtual bookstore, and I'm excited to color with you all here today. Great, so tell us a little bit about yourself before we begin. Sure, so I'm currently a researcher and a graduate student at the MIT Media Lab, and my background is in math and computer science. And I feel so lucky to have found my love for math as a kid early on uh, through puzzles and art, which is what this book is about. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about, more about the book. Sure, so the book is about symmetries and it's an introduction to the mathematical study of symmetry called group theory. 
And I'm really excited about my book because I think that through illustration and coloring illustrations, we can explore and play with symmetry in a way that's approachable for people from all different backgrounds. And the entire book is building up to uh, playing with symmetries and what we call the wallpaper patterns. And it's these types of patterns that we'll be playing through uh, and coloring today. And this book isn't just talking about symmetry and coloring. There are also these coloring challenges. So the illustrations in the book, they're meant to help show the concepts, the mathematical concepts of the book. Um, but it's the coloring challenges, which are these little puzzles that help us really engage with the concepts. But that said, if you just want to chill out and color with us today, while some of us talk about symmetries and puzzle, that's fine too. Like all are welcome. Just hang out with us, color, while the rest of us talk about uh, symmetries and think about puzzles. Awesome, great. So you told me a little bit earlier, but I thought everyone would be interested in hearing about this. What inspired your book? Yeah, sure. So the wallpaper patterns did. And I'm going to take you for a moment to the Alhambra in Spain. And this is a Moorish palace in Granada, Spain. And it's covered with these geometric designs and wallpaper patterns. And this is just to meant to show that these wallpaper patterns, they, they, we can find them all over the world. And they've inspired all these different cultures. And they also inspired the artist M.C. Escher, who you might be familiar with. He's well known for depicting these impossible objects and for creating these wallpaper patterns. So the piece right behind me, it's from his Metamorphosis series where his pattern with birds morphs into a pattern with fish and then later some insects and a honeycomb and it ends up in this scene with a castle on a cliff and his, all of his artwork is really cool. And it inspired me. And uh, he's well known for these impossible objects and worlds that he was, he was able to create. And it's this type of artwork early on as a kid that was my first hint that math was about so much more than just numbers. And I was able to get lost in thinking about infinity and these alternative universes that his artwork and math helped show me. Um, and I want to be able to show that all to other people as well. Great. Thanks so much for sharing that. It's good to know how much more math can be than what we think it is. Um, so do you want to begin showing us the pages from your book? Yeah, sure. So before we begin, I want to tell you a little bit more about the book. And I am going to leave my virtual world so that you can better see what I color. And I am going to screen share with you all. So I hope you can see my screen. This is the PDF packet that we posted in the chat that you can all print out, I hope, or just follow along to. And we are also going to walk through an interactive version of it. But actually, the entire book is interactive, too. So if you go to beautifulsymmetry.onl, um, which we also uh, posted a link to in the chat, you can walk through the digital version of this book. So it's with the MIT Press. Oh, my virtual background is still on. I'm sorry, everyone. Got to turn that off for you. Do you have the ability to do that, Hannah? One moment. Do you need help? Here we are. I've got it. OK, great. Sorry, everyone. I have a lot of screens up. All right, so back to beautifulsymmetry.onl, which you can follow along to. So all of the content in the book that's for coloring on paper, it all comes to life online. So the idea here is that it might be hard to see the symmetries on a piece of paper when they're static, but they're interactive and animate online. So if it's hard to see what a quarter turn is, well, maybe it's a little bit easier when it turns in front of you. And so in this way, 
the book is interactive in these two different mediums. Um, as a coloring book, you interact with it through coloring, but online you can interact with it through animating these illustrations. And this is all free. It's meant as just this dual medium to help you better understand the content of the book. And the same way you flip through the pages of a book, you can flip through the pages of this digital book as well. Okay, so back to our packet. Um, the first three pages of the packet are our symmetries guide, and they're going to help tell us about the symmetries that we'll be coloring through in our wallpaper pattern. Um, but this too is interactive online. So if you go to beautifulsymmetry.onl slash symmetries, um, this is the first three pages of our coloring packet that's telling us about our symmetries. And before we get started with coloring, I just want to make sure we all better understand what these symmetries are. Um, does anyone have any questions starting off? Just slow me down if this is ever going too quickly, but I'm going to start talking to you about symmetry. Okay, so one of our symmetries is translation. And so our wallpaper patterns all have translation as a symmetry. And another word for translation is repetition or a shift. And this is intrinsic to any wallpaper pattern because it's infinitely repeating. And let's talk about what infinitely repeating means. So here is one of our pieces, um, one of our uh, pieces of our packet. It's a wallpaper pattern that I started coloring. And it's an infinitely repeating pattern. And when I say that, I mean, look at one of the pieces and see how it infinitely repeats across again and again. Um, but I want you to see this as a pattern that infinitely extends beyond the borders of the paper. We could see the entire pattern continue um, past the borders. And so when we talk about infinitely repeating patterns, I really want to see you, you to see them as infinitely repeating beyond the, the boundaries of our sad pieces of paper. So talking about translation, we can see translation in when we take a triangle and we shift it over, say, again and again. And we could generate an infinitely repeating pattern by infinitely shifting or translating one of these triangles. But then we could also see what it creates. It creates an infinitely repeating pattern. And we could imagine shifting the entire pattern in the same way that just one triangle shifted. So I could imagine taking one triangle in this pattern and shifting it over. But there's also another triangle right behind it to follow and shift over to land on that triangle. And each triangle in this way lands on an identical triangle. And there's always one more triangle behind it to follow. And remember, since this is an infinitely repeating pattern, there's always going to be another triangle behind a triangle to land on an identical triangle. But since each piece landed on an identical piece, nothing changed. Our pattern was completely left unchanged if we were to shift it over in this way. If we were to shift the entire pattern over. So when we say a symmetry, I mean a transformation on our pattern that then leaves it unchanged. And we'll see how this breaks down when we start coloring things. So that's translation. Was I'm going to jump through some of these other symmetries as well, just so that we can understand what we're coloring through. But in the meantime, does anyone have any questions? Is that unclear? I'm going to count on Hannah to stop me if anyone does. But now, now one question. Yes. So what is the difference between translation and infinitely repeating? That's a great question. It's kind of the same thing. So translation is what we call maybe the transformation of when we take an infinitely repeating pattern and we do something to it, like we translate it over and still we end up with an infinitely repeating pattern. Um, you can maybe think of them for this, this purpose as maybe the same thing. Um, so maybe translation is like the thing you do once, but infinitely repeating is maybe the, the object we start with and the thing you end up with. So think of translation as the action and infinitely repeating as maybe the way to describe the, the thing that we're taking the action upon of translating over. So I want to talk to you about these other symmetries, these other actions. So another one of them is a mirror reflection, where 
we could take a triangle and now instead of just like shifting it over, we can flip it across one of these otherwise invisible uh, reflection axes. So we could flip a triangle across one of these axes and since then it keeps on flipping over or translating over, we end up with infinitely many of these reflection axes. But in this, by uh, generating, say, a pattern in this way, we also end up with these axes as symmetries of our pattern that we made. Um, so we could imagine taking just one of these reflection axes and reflecting the entire pattern across it. So this triangle, it'll land on this triangle. And a triangle right over here, when we reflect it across that same axis, well, it'll jump all the way over to this triangle. And we can keep on going over and seeing how identical triangles will land on identical triangles. And we can do this for any one of these axes. And we can see that these mirror reflections, again, leave the entire pattern unchanged. So that's why mirror reflection is a symmetry of this pattern. And remember, the pattern's infinitely repeating. So there's also a triangle over here and over here, and it's going to flip all the way over to land on a school triangle. So that's mirror reflection. Please play around with it. Um, I'm going to quickly walk you through some of other, our other symmetries. We also have glide reflection. That's kind of a trickier one. It combines uh, sort of mirror reflection and translation. So we can see how uh, a triangle if this is our mirror ax our glide reflection axis, it reflects across the axis at the same time as translating along it. See that? This is our glide reflection axis. And again, we could see this in just one triangle, but we can imagine doing this to the entire pattern, uh, gliding the entire pattern across this axis. So while this triangle will land on this one, this one will also land on this one, and this one will land on this one. And we can glide reflect the entire pattern at once. All right, so we also have rotations, which I think everyone's familiar with. Imagine sticking a pin in between these triangles and rotating these uh, two triangles around the pin by half a turn or 180 degrees. I like to call it half a turn though. So this one, it'll rotate around and land on this one. But we could also do this in a pattern. See how this triangle, it rotates around by half a turn to land on this one. And this triangle can also rotate around this rotation point and land on this one. And we end up with infinitely many rotation points because we have this infinitely repeating pattern. And we can rotate the entire pattern. Um, so we could stick a pin right here and rotate the entire pattern, half a turn around that pin. In this triangle, it'll land on this one, and this one, it'll land on this one. And again, each triangle lands on identical triangle. This half turn is a symmetry of our pattern because it leaves the entire pattern unchanged. Um, I'm gonna quickly jump through the rest of these so we can start coloring. Um, so we also have a quarter turn in the same way we have a half turn. So we could rotate a triangle a quarter of the way around uh, a circle and keep on doing that again and again. So we have four turns around um, and then we can translate over or we can continue turning over and we end up with a pattern that has quarter turns. So here's another rotation point in our pattern where we could rotate the entire pattern around this rotation point. But we also have more too. So we have them at the center of each of these like four triangles we also have a rotation point uh, between them as well for quarter turns. So we also have third turns and six turns. And I just want to make sure that we're able to see turns in our patterns and we should start coloring soon. Um, does anyone have any questions? Question. Yes, we have a couple more questions that were asked during this portion. Um, one is, Give us some symmetries in nature, please. So they're wondering, where can we see symmetries in nature? Sure, so um, imagine a, a butterfly, right? And it has two wings and the wings might be mirror images of each other, right? So 
um, one wing might be the mirror image of another wing. So that's where we might see um, a mirror symmetry in, in nature. Or you could see it in a reflection. Say you have a tree at the edge of a, a pond and it's reflected in the water and you can see that as well. Um, maybe you're more curious about where we see infinitely repeating patterns. Um, nature can show them to us. I also like seeing them the things that we tend to build as humans. So my favorite um, thing is looking at bricks. Uh, there are all these different ways for people to lay bricks in the sidewalks or in buildings and uh, they have different symmetries. A really common one is just to have uh, bricks with uh, glide symmetries. And um, we'll, we'll walk through some uh, coloring uh, packets uh, with glide symmetries, but, but those are ones to start seeing just when you're walking down the sidewalk. And we actually, we had quite a few questions submitted okay. Okay. <laughs> in the past minute. So I'll see how many we can get through. Um, but another one is, these rotations include reflections, right? Um, yeah, so we're gonna show some patterns that have both rotations and reflections. Uh, you don't always have reflections when you have rotations, but you can have both. And what is the standard rotation point? The standard rotation point, um, I'm not really sure what's meant by that. What I think is really cool about our wallpaper patterns is that once you have one rotation point, uh, since our wallpaper patterns are infinitely repeating, you have infinitely more rotation points. So in this pattern when we were generating it, we started with just one rotation point right here that we're looking at. But since it's an infinitely repeating pattern, you can see that the same rotation point is right here and right here. So in this way, we don't have just one. Great. And can you explain the one-sixth turn? Sure. So I was um, showing you how, I, maybe one-sixth is a, maybe that's a confusing way to put it. Um, so we started off looking at triangles that turn by half a, a circle of the way around. And so that I'm calling it a half turn. Um, and then we we're also looking at when a triangle uh, turns four times around, so it turns by a quarter turn in this pattern. Um, and then also we have a third of the way around, and I'm calling that a third turn, but we could also have it do just a, a sixth of a way around so that it has to rotate six times around um, before getting back to where it started. And I'm just calling that a one sixth turn but Great. you could also call it a, a 60 degree turn. Okay, cool. Okay. And one more, does this work with other shapes besides a triangle? That's a great question, yes. And that brings us back to our coloring packets because I want to show you that it's not really about the starting design. It doesn't really matter that we're starting with triangles and turning them around. We could take any sort of design. Um, we could take these, uh, funny double triangles, or we could take these curves. And so we're gonna be walking through these different types of patterns. And for each type of pattern, they have different symmetries. And we have a page that describes the symmetries in our pattern. And then we have two pages where we're showing those symmetries with two different types of designs. Once with the double triangles, and then um, with these curves but we're showing the same symmetries. It doesn't matter what this starting design was. Um, it's more about the symmetries that uh, are the relationship between the designs on the page. So let's, let's get started. So the first three pages of our packet are explaining our symmetries. And then we have a description of a pattern. And then we have two coloring pages for our pattern and our description pages, they also have challenges um, that invite us to color our patterns um, in a way that are a bit more engaging. And we'll be going through these challenges today. And if you just want to start coloring, please go ahead. So I'm going to walk us through the simplest one, and then we're going to start playing with uh, some of the more challenging ones as well, as well as seeing patterns that have these different types of rotations and rotations and reflections. I promise we'll get to those. So our 
first, um, I'm going to go off screen share now, by the way, and show you, uh, I'm going to, on the paper in front of me, I'm going to stop sharing. And can you all see my screen okay? Hello, I'm here. Can you see my paper? Great. So the first description of one of our patterns is, this is the sim simplest uh, pattern group and it has just translations. And I want you all to see the translations in both the horizontal and vertical direction. So I started coloring mine a little bit, but can you see how we can see just one piece and then I'll show you with my marker. It shifts over to the right and we can shift it over to the left, right and left, up and down. And these are translations when we say we're shifting it over. And once we have translations in both the left and right and up and down directions, we can combine them to get translations in these diagonal directions as well. So I want you all to see these different directions of translation. Um, but then a challenge here is, can you color the pattern so that the shortest distance of the pattern, uh, the pattern can translate doubles? So what do I mean by that? So if we were considering each of these pieces a unit, we can shift it over by one unit um, to have each piece land an identical piece, an um, identical black and white piece, um, and the pattern is left unchanged. And I, um, then I was over here, I was coloring in uh, these, these green pieces, and I was coloring it in a way that maintained these symmetries so that in the same way I could shift it over before, I can still shift over each piece and it'll land on identically colored piece. Um, but if I were to instead color this piece um, red, or if I were to just like put a lot of orange over here, that I would break the symmetry of this pattern, right? Because then I wouldn't be able to say that the pattern can shift over and land on an identical piece because I would have a piece colored one way landing on a piece colored another way. And that wouldn't be a symmetry. I, in this way, we can use color to destroy these symmetries. Does everyone see that? How we can use color to either maintain or destroy the symmetries? All right, so back to our challenge. Can you color the pattern so that the shortest distance that the pattern can translate doubles? So over here in this corner, um, I was using orange to show what I meant, where I colored this piece orange, and then I skipped a piece and then colored the next piece orange, and then skip the piece and color the next piece orange. And I did the same thing going up and down as well. So now uh, I can't shift this piece by one unit and have it land on an identical piece because that would mean an orange piece lands on a black and white piece. Instead, I have to double the amount by which I shift it or translate it. So I have to sh translate it by double that amount and land over here. Is that clear how we can use color to uh, complete this puzzle. Want to make sure it is so that we can jump to some more exciting and challenging puzzles too. Does anyone have any questions? I really hope that you do a much better job coloring this than I did and please share with us later um, your beautiful creations because mine are really simple. Any questions? I don't think we have any questions so far. Okay, great. Let's keep on jumping through our patterns. So the next one in our packet has glide symmetry. And again, we can show it with these double triangles, but we can also see the exact same symmetries with these different designs, these curves. It's the same pattern. It has the same symmetries. We're just showing it in two different ways. And I just wanna make sure that everyone can see what the glide reflections are. So we have this axis of glide reflection along right here. And we can glide this piece along that axis. See it's reflecting at the same time as translating. And at the same time, this piece is gliding and reflecting at the same time as translating to end up over here. And this way, this reflection, this glide reflection axis is a symmetry of the pattern. And we also have one right here and one right here. And we also have them um, in between too. We have one right here as well. And I'm gonna jump through our packet really quickly so that then we can um, land on some exciting things that we wanna color together. So we also have some packet uh, pages with rotations. 
So here's one that has half turns. So remember we're talking about these half turn points? I'm going to make it really clear to you where one of the half turn points are. I just drew a point right here. And I want you to see the entire pattern as rotating by half a turn around that point. Can you all see that? So that this piece lands on this piece. And at the same time, this piece will land on this piece. And you could see how all of the pieces will land on identical pieces when we turn half away around that point. And we can see the same thing in our curves pattern as well. It has the same symmetries. It just has a different design showing them. Okay, well, that was just one half turn rotation point. And an identical one is, you know, right here as well, right here as well. But there are different types too. There's also one right here. So we could rotate around this one and this piece will land right here. And there's also one over here and over here and over here and then between them as well. Um, and I can color this in a way that now maintains these symmetries. If I could, it's still unclear what I mean. I'm going to, you all see what I'm coloring? I'm gonna color these pieces um, in a way that maintains our symmetries. I would have to keep on going uh, in order to really maintain the symmetry, but I just want you to see what I mean by a half turn so that each of our blue pieces, when it rotates around this point, will land on identical blue piece. Okay, what is a challenge for this pattern? So here is our description of the pattern. Um, this pattern has half turn rotations and our visual challenge is can you find all the different centers of the half turn rotations? Well, I tried to show you a bunch of them on our piece, uh, our paper with the triangles, but I leave it to you to identify those same rotation points on our other design page. Can you color the pattern to remove half of the rotations? Can you color the pattern to remove all of the rotations so that it only has translation? So these challenges are asking us to break the rotational symmetry or break half of them. And so it's, it's a bit easier to break all of them, right? <laughs> so that it just has translation. So here, I'm gonna do an example where I, I break the symmetries on what I started coloring so that it just has uh, translation. So we had uh, the rotations here before. Now I'm gonna add some orange to this piece. And I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna add some orange to this piece. And keep on going. And I'm gonna um, add blue over here again. Blue over here. I had some blue over here. Um, and if I wanted this to, if I wanted to continue maintaining the half turn, I would put orange right here as well, and orange right here as well to maintain these half turn points. Um, but I want to break them. So I'm not going to do that. I'm instead going to put green over here. And to help you see the uh, translation, I'm just going to add a little bit more blue. And again, I hope that you will do a much more uh, attractive job than I am of this. Using these big markers so that it's easier to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to be a little bit messy to go really quickly. So do you see how this pattern, it already had translations and it still has them because this piece can translate over, land on this piece, land on this piece. These ones, they can translate over and land on identical pieces. 
And of course, if we were to keep on coloring this, um, we would uh, keep maintain the, the vertical translations as well. Um, but we removed these half turns because now if I rotate this piece around this half turn point, green will land on orange and orange will land on green. And so we broke those half turn symmetries. Okay, I just want to do that as a quick example. And I want to jump through what some of our more interesting patterns are as well. And then we can come back to the ones that you all want to focus on coloring. In the meantime, are there any questions to slow me down? Or should we keep on going? Well, we did have um, a couple more questions. One is, why is it that people, humans, tend to lean towards symmetry? You know, I am not a psychologist, but <laughs> I think that a lot of people would have some interesting answers for you. It, it does seem like there's something about our perception of beauty that is uh, related to symmetry. And I think that a psychologist might even tell you that someone with a more symmetrical face might be seen as more attractive because of it. Um, but I am, I am not the expert to tell you that. Another person suggested that you could make textiles with these patterns. That is absolutely true. Remember how I was telling you about uh, MC Escher? So his process was when he was creating his wallpaper patterns is he was basically making like a stamp that he could then um, stamp and then apply a symmetry to. And for the simplest symmetry of translation, he would then just stamp again and again because in the same way you could um, kind of like what we were doing on, on the online version um, where we are seeing a piece and consider this uh, being created by a stamp and then stamping it here and stamping it here. Or we could take a stamp and then twist it and end up with our rotations as well. And then of course you can see these in fabric textiles too, which is really amazing. Um, people do incredible work when they're, they're knitting um, or using fabric and creating fabrics in other ways. Um, and those uh, work with knitting and um, textile creation, it is so mathematical and you're right, uh, there's so much uh, thinking about symmetry that goes into that creation process. Definitely, someone else also suggested floor tiles. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> we see lots of wallpaper patterns in our floor tiles. And someone else asked how many points of rotation are there? I'm not quite sure which pattern they were referring to. Maybe they're talking about the different types of rotation, which is a really interesting question. So we were talking about half turns and quarter turns and third turns and six turns. And maybe you're wondering, why did you skip the fifth turns? Or why didn't you talk about seventh turns? Well, it's not possible, sorry. We, don't, we can't have those in our wallpaper patterns. It's impossible. And if you jump to the wallpaper section of the book, um, we try to talk about and show you why it's not possible. Uh, if you, um, it's not possible, say, on the two-dimensional plane that a, a paper or a floor with wallpaper tilings uh, leaves us with, but it's uh, possible on other types of surfaces. For example, uh, three-dimensional objects, or if you think of the surface of a sphere, um, you can see uh, other, other types of turns. I hope that was the answer to the question. Great. All right, I'll mute again. Keep going. Okay, let's look at some of our other patterns in our packet. So we looked at the one with this translation, and then we looked at half turns, and someone had before asked about reflections with rotations, and so I want to show you an example of that. Um, another pattern in our packet is this one with uh, the twos and the star at the top. And we have it in both our curves and our uh, triangles, and I want to show you these half turns. So we could take this as a half turn rotation point, and we could rotate the entire pattern around that half turn rotation point. And each piece lands on an identical piece. This one lands here, this one lands here, and this one over here, it lands all the way over here. And we could color in a way that we still have those half turn rotations. And 
They occur all over the place, but there are more too. There's another one right here, another type, and another type right here. But this also has reflection axes. So remember reflection axes, what they are. We could, I could even draw the reflection axis right here for you in green. I think I'll do that to make it a little bit more clear. Okay, I just drew two different reflection axes for you. So we could reflect the entire pattern across one of these vertical axes. And this piece, it'll land on an identical piece right here. It'll be flipped over. And this one, it'll also be flipped all the way over over here. And then we have another reflection axis over here, where this piece, it'll flip over here. Um, and we have infinitely many. Of course, we have another one right here. And then infinitely many over, uh, because this pattern you know, continues beyond the boundaries of this page, of course. But we also have horizontal reflection axes, and I'm going to draw a couple of those for you too to see. So do you see these now? Here's an example of one where if I flick the pattern across this axis, this piece, it'll land on this piece, this piece, it'll land on this piece. And what's fun to notice is at the intersection of any of these um, perpendicular reflection axes, we're always going to have a half turn. So a horizontal uh, reflection axis intersects with a vertical reflection axis here. And then at their intersection point, we have a half turn rotation point. And so you can see how this piece we could reflect across this axis, or we could rotate it by half a turn around and have it land on this identical piece. Okay, so we're looking at a pattern with uh, half turns and rotations, but let's also talk about what a challenge for this could be. Can you color the pattern to remove the vertical mirror reflections, but leave the horizontal mirror reflections? This is our challenge paper, which you can see in your packet. So that's one challenge. Can you color the pattern to remove all mirror reflections? So I'm just going to read these off and then we can come back to doing these challenges together uh, that people see interesting. Okay, just quickly jumping through the rest of our packet so that we can have some time for coloring together. So the next one has quarter turn rotations as well as half turn rotations. And we also show it with our curves. And I'm just looking at time and I know we're not going to be able to get through all of these. So I also want to invite you to jump through the rest of the packet if this is all a bit too easy um, or simple for you. I think there are definitely some challenges at the end for you. So here is a pattern with quarter turns and I want you to see these quarter turns. I'm going to draw some rotation points for you. So here I drew some green rotation points. Here's one. We can see the pattern as rotating around one of these rotation points four different times. Get all the back way to where it started. And we can see just one of the pieces rotating around this rotation point or the entire pattern, of course. And so we have these rotation points, these quarter turns um, in our pattern. But we also have these other quarter turns, which I'm now going to draw, that are a different rotation point, but they're still, they're still quarter turn rotation points. So here's one, here's one, here's one. And we could color in a way that maintains these quarter rotation points. And there are also half turns in this pattern, and I hope you can find those. So our challenge here is to see the half turns and the quarter turn rotations. And um, now the coloring challenge is, can you color the pattern so that it only has half turn rotations and translations and no quarter turn rotations? So this is a challenge where we use color to destroy the quarter turns of symmetries and leave it with just half turns and uh, translations. And I'm going to do a little example with our double triangles. It does just that. And maybe you can try uh, copying what I do with the, the curves if you think that this is 
You think you see it. Okay, so here's one of our uh, quarter turn rotation points. And I'm going to break it. I'm going to color this piece green and this piece green. But, uh oh, where did my other colors go? I'm going to color this piece orange, this piece orange, and I'm going to go one more over where I do this again. I should have gotten some bigger markers so I could go a little bit more quickly for you. So with this piece, we originally had these quarter turns, but then I colored it in a way that it's only a half turn rotation point now because this green piece, it can rotate by half a turn and land on an identical green piece in the same way this orange piece will land on an identical orange piece. But we can't rotate it by a quarter of a turn around because then green lands on orange and orange lands on green and that would not be a symmetry. And it still has translation. Imagine me doing this uh, throughout the entire pattern of, of coloring it in this way. We can translate uh, this entire section over or we could see just this green piece translating over to land on this green piece and this orange piece translating over to land on this orange piece. And then we also have this, have this half turn right here as well. And where this, if we rotate around this uh, point, this orange piece will land on this orange piece, this green piece will land on this green piece. So we also have some patterns with both um, quarter turns, and half turns and mirrors. So this one, it looks like this. It looks a lot like our previous one, um, but it also has mirror reflections and less and fewer quarter turns. We can talk more about that if people want to. Um, and so we just jumped through all of the patterns in our packet really quickly. And now I just want to make sure we're able to spend some time coloring the ones that people are interested in. Are there any questions, Hannah? Yes, we do have a couple questions. Um, one is, if we have time, could we cover the numbering scheme, e.g. 2 by 22, in the Not upper sure. left of the sheets? Absolutely. So, you know, mathematicians, they have a really hard time naming things. And uh, the numbering thing, um, it's a notation called orbifold notation, and it's a way in which we can name our patterns. So remember how I was saying that, uh, say, these two patterns, they're the same patterns. They have the same symmetries. We're just showing them in two different ways with these different designs. We need to give them the same name. Notation helps us give things the, the same names so that we know what we're talking about. We're talking about a pattern with this type of symmetry where it has half turns and it has uh, reflections. And okay, now you wanna know what, what these names mean. They are meaningful, which is kind of why orbifold notation is really cool. Um, they give us actually a clue as to what we can, what types of symmetries we should expect to see in our patterns. So we can, we can talk about that. It's also in the back of the book. And if you don't have the book with you, it's also online if you jump to beautifulsymmetry.onl and go to the table of contents at the bottom you'll see notes on notation and that explains um, how the the names are created and it's it's pretty straightforward when we see a four it means there's a quarter turn rotation when we see another four that means there's another quarter turn rotation and when we see a two that means that there's a half turn rotation and then there are also ones with a you know third turn rotations and six rotations and when we see a star, it means there's a reflection. But if we don't see a star, it doesn't mean there's a, it means there's no reflection at all. Great. So we do have a couple more questions. Um, do you have examples of the same pages colored in different ways to change the symmetry? 
Sure. Um, I don't have any examples that I already colored for you, um, but we can we can do one together. I wonder which which one we should do together. Um, so let's do one of our challenges together so that we can better understand what that means. Of the challenges that I just walked through, does everyone have a, anyone have a favorite that they want to um, do together to see us change the symmetries? I then am going to choose a favorite if no one else types into the chat and says what there is. is. Yeah, I don't see any suggestions, so we may just be able to pick one. Okay. Can you find suggested one of the more complex ones that we talked about in the end? In the end. Okay. All right. Let's jump to the last one then. Last one. Or, you know what? I think this one's going to be a little too complex. Mm. All right. Let's do it. Let's try it to get you guys excited to learn more. All right, so this is the, the four star two one. Can you see the half turns and half turn rotations? Can you see the different mirror reflections? Can you see the different glide reflections? Can you color the pattern to remove the quarter turn rotations but keep the half turn rotations? Can you color the pattern to remove the vertical mirror reflections? Let's remove the vertical mirror reflections. How about that? So first of all, Let's make sure we can see the mirror reflections. I draw them in green for you. We only have seven minutes, so we're going to do a, a baby version of this. Can you see the mirror reflections? Or I could take this piece and reflect it across this axis and it'll land on this piece. And this piece could reflect it across this axis and land on this piece. Well, now we're going to remove these mirror reflections. So um, I'm going to keep the horizontal mirror reflections, but remove the vertical mirror reflections. That's what we're going to do. And while I'm doing this challenge, I want everyone else to try this challenge as well. So we've just started doing this, um, but can people see how we are starting to remove these uh, vertical mirrors? We could remove all of the vertical mirrors, um, but a more uh, challenging uh, puzzle would be to remove the vertical mirrors while keeping other types of symmetries. Can we jump through one more just so that we, we have a little bit more variation? Does anyone have another exciting one that they want to do? Let's come back to maybe the glide reflections. Did anyone, did everyone understand glide reflections? So here is two star two two. It has both half turns and it has mirror reflections. And one of our challenges for this one was to see um, the different perpendicular axes of mirror reflection and where those axes intersect. Um, can you see the half turns that both rely on the mirror reflection axes and those that don't? And can you? Um, color the pattern to remove the vertical mirror reflections, but leave the horizontal mirror reflections. Could we color the pattern to remove all the mirror reflections? So I also want you all to see that once you have mirror reflection, you kind of have like glide reflections in there as well. 
So something I could do to make it so that this instead has glide reflections is I could color this piece green and then color this piece green and then I could go back and forth in this way. So do you now see that we have a glide reflection axis that's made a little bit more clear where I have a glide reflection axis right here and I could glide this piece across this reflection axis and remember it, it, a glide reflection is a flip and then a translation so this piece will land on this piece and this piece will land on this piece will land on this piece. So this is just one way that we can start playing with our patterns to change the types of symmetries that we can see within them. And the idea of the puzzles is to help you see these different symmetries within them and sometimes break those symmetries and maybe even try to see new ones that you weren't able to see before. We just have two more minutes, so I want to make sure that um, Hannah has time to close us out and we're able to answer any more questions that people might have. Yeah, so we've had a couple more questions. Um, one question is, can you color both sides of the plane, extending it to a 3D exercise as a mental exercise or even through animation? We color both sides of the plane. Oh, you mean if we were to uh, color the other side of our piece of paper? I suppose that's what they mean. That's a really fun idea, yeah. Um, if you end up doing that and maybe have some way that you like work origami into it and then fold your piece of paper over, that would be so cool. Um, maybe one way to even think about mirror reflection is when you are able to fold something over and see how um, if you had previously drawn a mirror reflection axis, where you could imagine um, folding the piece of paper over and having each piece land on an identical piece that way too. And maybe you could play around with what you would put on the other side. Thinking about extending this to three dimensions though, well, our symmetries do um, extend in concept to three dimensions. So we have the wallpaper patterns, which are the two dimensional um, infinitely repeating patterns. And then you might wanna look into crystallography and there's a whole study of how these symmetries are seen in these um, 3D objects as well and crystals and chemists and physicists have thought a lot about this. Great. And then the last question is, how does this all connect back to group theory? Oh, such a great question. Well, group theory is one way in which we can more concretely talk about um, symmetries and how they, uh, how they can relate to each other, or say the reasons that we can't have fifth turns um, in our, and um, you know, with my coloring book, what I was trying to do was I was trying to show these symmetries on paper, but there's this more abstract concept of symmetry that can't necessarily be shown in patterns on paper. And group theory gives us, say, the language or the concepts enable to be able to think about those more abstract concepts um, of symmetry that we can't necessarily draw. Great, so I think that's it for now. Um, we'll be posting some notes from this online later and send around the link. But uh, for now, I just wanna say thank you all for coming. Um, you know, while we're all social distancing and unable to do events in person, 
Um, MIT Press Live is intended to help everyone at home connect with authors online. So to learn more about this book, you can visit our website at mitpress.mit.edu. Um, again, it's called Beautiful Symmetry by Alex Burke. And if you want to join our next event, you can find all of our MIT Press Live events online at mitpress.mit.edu slash mitpresslive. Our next author talk is next Tuesday, same time. And um, it is with Jonathan Haber, author of Critical Thinking. Thanks everyone. And thanks for having me, Hannah. All right, thank you, Alex. You did a great job. Thanks. Bye, Bye. everyone. Happy coloring.